Some big news on the medical front this morning. An FDA panel is recommending vaccinating boys against the virus that is the main cause of cervical cancer. And not unlike the vaccine for girls, it's causing a bit of controversy. Here's CBS News medical correspondent Dr. John LaPook. Allison Sabino is a busy mother of five. Her 15-year-old daughter has already had the HPV vaccine and Sabino would jump at the chance to give it to her boys. I'm actually thrilled that the vaccine is available for boys. I do not want to ever find out that my boys were contributing to the spreading of the disease. Drug maker Merck presented three studies of more than 5,000 boys and men. Gardasil was 89 percent effective at preventing genital warts. Merck did not specifically test if vaccinating males will prevent the transmission of HPV. But it believes if Gardasil can reduce 89 percent of genital lesions, it will likely reduce the spread of HPV and cervical cancer in women. The series of three shots cost $390. But it's not the cost that has some saying, Gardasil's not worth it. And I would love my daughter and my son to get a vaccination that would prevent any kind of HPV. But it has to be at no cost. And I don't mean financial cost, I mean at no health risk cost. Allison Sabino is not worried. I think that there are risks involved in any vaccine that you give your children. However, I feel in the case of Gardasil, I feel the benefits outweigh the risks. Dr. John LaPook, CBS News, New York. Joining us now is WCBS medical correspondent, Dr. Holly Phillips. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Maggie. I know plenty of parents of girls who aren't sure about giving this vaccine because of the potential risks. So what is the best argument that a doctor could make for giving it to boys who aren't even at risk for cervical cancer? Well, sure, there are really three reasons to give it to boys. Uh, the first is that the vaccine cuts down on genital warts. And even though th those may not be life-threatening, they're certainly embarrassing and something hard for boys to go through. Uh, later in life, there's actually also a connection with HPV and throat and anal cancer, so other forms of cancers in men can be prevented by using the vaccine. Uh, and then finally, you can make the argument that you could possibly eradicate an entire illness within a population, which is cervical cancer. By cutting down on HPV in both men and women, we can really make a huge difference in cervical cancer. Speaking of things that affect our children, I'd like to ask you about these new numbers regarding H1N1 that came out this morning. 73% of American colleges and universities are reporting cases already in September, most of the cases in the Midwest and Southeast. As a doctor, is that disconcerting to you? Maggie, I have to say it's disconcerting, but it's not surprising. We have to remember the Centers for Disease Control said that in a worst case scenario, 50% of the United States would be exposed to H1N1. So it's disconcerting that already in September we're seeing thousands of cases, but there's good news. Most of these cases are mild. The kids are just using fluids and rest and staying away from other kids and getting better on their own. Yeah, the, the schools aren't even testing for H1N1. They're just recommending relax, stay right. home, and get over the flu. And, and it, that's really the right treatment at this point. All right, Dr. Holly Phillips. Thank you so much.